Hello? Would you say? Okay. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and get started here. A few people may be joining us a little bit late. Um, just a quick round of introductions on our side. Hi, my name is Michael Guglielmi. I'm the Vice President of Channel and Business Development for WebScale. Also joining me today is Anand, who is our Vice President of Product for WebScale. Hi, so guys. We're ha happy to have everyone here today to talk about WebScale, our technology platform, uh, and where we see the fit of our services, especially in regards to real security, um, their network of reseller partners, and also ultimately uh, their customers within the, the, their region. But before we go into that, we wanted to take a, a couple minutes to give you a high level overview of WebScale. Uh, essentially, WebScale provides cloud management for web applications uh, that significantly improve the performance, scalability, security, and uptime of any web application. Um, this is essentially helps with the migration of applications uh, from typically static, ho static hosting environments to take advantage of any public cloud. It could be public, private, or hybrid cloud deployments. Um, where we are orchestrating the ongoing tuning and availability of that application in whichever cloud provider you, that the customer is deployed in. So as you can see here, WebScale is completely cloud agnostic. We currently have over eight cloud service provider integrations today. Those include some of the biggest ones that you have heard of, uh, you know, Amazon, uh, Google, IBM, Azure, uh, and then some smaller regional cloud providers as well, like CenturyLink, um, also service uh, Alibaba regions as well. Um, to date, we've migrated over 700 applications across these various cloud providers. And in just last year alone, 2017, we processed over $5 billion of revenue across our customer base using the WebScale technology. So with that, um, we wanted to take a quick um, minute to, to go over the high level uh, value propositions of, of WebScale. Um, certainly comes down to five key things, uh, performance, availability, security, scalability, and of course, lowering costs. Um, from an availability perspective, uh, WebScale uses the technology that we call predictive auto scaling so that we are able to see ahead of traffic surges coming into the application, um, essentially dynamically adding compute capacity to wherever the customer is deployed in, in whichever cloud. Uh, so we stay ahead of any traffic surges that may come about from a viral marketing event or a, even a real, real world event that drives a flood of traffic to a site that would ordinarily be overwhelmed by that traffic WebScale has a unique technology that is able to dynamically um, add capacity on the fly without any user interruption to keep the application always available. From a performance perspective, um, we are not only a application delivery controller as well as a load balancer, uh, but in addition to that, because of those two features that we provide, uh, we are able to not only load balance traffic, but also improve the performance optimization of applications uh, to also impact how applications are delivered on mobile devices, significantly improving the performance, um, sometimes up by 60% uh, above what they were experiencing before on their previous platform. Uh, from a security perspective, obviously very important. Um, we provide not only a web application firewall that is specifically designed for web applications and, and, and covers all your typical OWASP top 10 uh, vulnerabilities, whitelisting, blacklisting, but we also do file integrity monitoring, which Anand will hit on later, uh, which is pretty unique in the industry in that it is able to, uh, again, dynamically um, mitigate 
uh, attacks against your application infrastructure and and resolve those uh, in machine time, not human time. And we'll spend a little bit uh, a little bit going through a, a scenario of that as well when we come to the security page. Um, scalability kind of hit on this already, but the uh, um, ability of the web scale technology platform to predictively auto scale to handle any size load of traffic um, is unique and again works across any cloud environment. And then lower cost, finally, because we are traditionally migrating customers from managed hosting environments um, or static hosting environments where they're overpaying and over provisioned for capacity. Um, a lot of our customers happen to be in some of the e-commerce space, uh, financial services space, um, retail space, and a lot of those customers are over-provisioned for, say, uh, nine months out of the year when they really need that provisioning for their three busy months of the season. So by coming over to WebScale and being right-sized in their infrastructure, uh, we are able to dramatically lower the cost of hosting their, their application um, sometimes by as much as 50 plus percent. So with that, where do our customers typically come from today? Um, they come from this, uh, this world or this view of multiple vendors, very complex integrations. Um, they might have a managed hosting provider. They might have a, a CDN for content delivery. They might have a system integrator. Um, if they're an application that needs to load balance traffic and manipulate traffic, they'll have an ADC or an application delivery controller component. Essentially, they'll have many moving parts and they'll also need to obviously think about security. And in and, and a, lot, a lot of today's world, that this is the customer's responsibility to, to, to do that. Uh, WebScale sees this differently. WebScale feels that our uh, the right way to go from a migration perspective and to take advantage of, of, of cloud is to wrap all of those services into one package and WebScale delivers this all uh, as an integrated scalable service it's all delivered as software as a service so there's no hardware to buy or maintain um, and it is completely multi-cloud as I said earlier cloud agnostic will work with any cloud platform um, additionally what we're able to do is give our customers the ability to retain complete control over their application lifecycle. So from a continuous integration and continuous delivery perspective, customers are able to iterate on their application uh, in a staging, in a de development staging, and ultimately uh, when they're ready, then WebScale will help them push that application from development into production. Uh, all under source control, so this really allows the customer to make quick changes to their application in a very controlled environment. Um, and then as we'll talk about uh, later on through an auto provisioning process that WebScale has, we're able to automate the provisioning, significantly reducing the time and the friction of, of moving applications from development to production. Uh, which in turn significantly improves the customer's experience with their application and, and how they uh, iterate on it to improve it continually. Uh, we'll wrap that all around with 24 by 7 support as well so that if the customer ever needs it, WebScale is there to help them and, and be an extension of their team, their IT team, their security team, uh, and their operations team to help them operate uh, the application infrastructure on a 24 by 7 basis. So again, when we think about web scale, again, com compared to a typical managed hosting environment, on the left-hand side of your screen here, you typically see what a managed hosting provider will provide. And they'll, def they'll, ha they'll typically have appliance-based approaches to load balancers, firewalls, how an application scales, uh, a backup process, databases, everything from operating systems to storage to smart hands, data centers, networking, these are all components that hosting providers will typically charge for. And because of that, the cost of traditional hosting has gone up and it continues to be, uh, we feel, a inhibitor to companies adopting cloud, not cloud services, but it's an inhibitor and, and is pushing companies away from traditional hosting to want to take advantage of public cloud environments. As we all know, public cloud is 
is not only ubiquitous, but it's also uh, infinitely scalable. So companies are looking to move workloads to public cloud environments to take advantage um, of those uh, features of scalability, um, ubiquity from a, a point of presence perspective, um, and reduce the cost and complexities while, per, per, while optimizing for uptime security and performance. However, what we found, especially in the mid-market of mid-market and smaller enterprise spaces, companies are oftentimes challenged with how do they make this migration from hosting to public cloud or to a private uh, hybrid cloud configuration. Many companies don't have the expertise to do that, and then once they are migrated, uh, they will have a, a difficult time in ensuring that the application always stays up and available. And that's exactly where WebScale comes in. We help our customers solve those challenges of not only migrating that application, but once it's migrated, ensuring that it always stays up, performs at its peak, and stays secure 100% uh, of the time. Now with that, how do we do it? It's really through a software-defined architecture. Um, so what we've essentially done is taken, uh, we have a separate control plane, which you see on the left-hand side of the screen here from a, a separate data plane. Think of the control plane as the intelligence engine of WebScale. Uh, this is where all the routing decisions are made, uh, the alerting, detailed analytics are kept, uh, whether or not we scale the application out or in, the scaling decisions, um, and the healing, so whether or not a server is behaving appropriately, whether or not it needs to be replaced. So all of this can happen in a separate cloud than one of the customers deployed in, um, and that's in, a, in the data plane, which can be in another cloud altogether. The data plane is where we have what you would typically consider your functionality of an application delivery controller, a load balancer, and also a web application firewall. And, and this part of WebScale essentially acts as a, as a reverse proxy. It fronts all of the HTTP uh, requests coming into the application. So all uh, data requests flow through the WebScale technology plane or data plane into the application uh, and back to the database. And this application tier and database tier is what is able to scale dynamically uh, based on the web scale technology to handle any flow of traffic that comes in to the application. Um, so as you can see here, um, web scales control plane is is uh, set up in, in one cloud and our customers control our data plane can be in any other cloud. Again, whether that's in Amazon, whether that's in Google, whether that's in CenturyLink, Alibaba, you name it. And if we don't have an integration today with one of those eight cloud service providers that I mentioned, in about two weeks, we could generally build into a new uh, cloud service provider if we don't already support them. Because this is software-defined infrastructure, uh, it's generally very easy to plug in another cloud service provider uh, and able to provide all of WebScale services into that new cloud region as well. So we're taking this centralized approach to control and a decentralized approach to data to give our customers the maximum flexibility to have their application live in whichever region it needs to be in and, and or whichever cloud provider it needs to be in. Um, the other thing I'll hit on here is just quickly cloud and web controls, which make a lot of decisions based on the data coming in into um, the customer's application. Uh, again, for load balancing, for traffic management, for security policies, um, we can go into this a little bit more as well as we go through the presentation. Uh, because these are very powerful controls that really give uh, give a lot of uh, control back to the customer in terms of how their traffic is um, managed and monitored as we go forward. So with that, a, a quick snapshot of where we're currently deployed today. And again, this is only on four of the eight uh, cloud service providers that we had. Uh, we have um, locations on today, so there are more than this today. But just across AWS, Google, Alibaba, CenturyLink, um, you can see that the locations that we're able to deploy services into. Um, again, this is just a snapshot, and there are more locations out there. But we have a pretty uh, exp expansive coverage map to date. Um, and again, because we use software-defined infrastructure, we're easily able to 
increase this footprint as needed, or if a customer has a location that we're not currently deployed in, uh, quickly add that either through an existing cloud provider partnership or, or integrate a new cl a cloud service provider altogether. And with that, um, I'm going to turn things over to Anand for a few minutes here to go through some of the core features and product benefits. Anand? Yep. Thanks, Mike. So, um, so here I'll be talking about uh, all the sort of key uh, technical features and the benefits of the different parts of the solution stack that WebScale provides. So, um, on the next slide, uh, yeah. So, so the the WebScale stack, right? So, m most of our solutions uh, come with the entire solution stack, and the the solution stack really provide uh, the, the value proposition points that we talked about earlier in terms of uh, uptime during uh, sort of high, high uh, traffic events, 100% uh, availability, performance, and, and a lot of security. Security both from a front end, from a traffic perspective, and security from uh, the back end infrastructure perspective. And all this is done in a very automated way. Uh, so it, it doesn't always require people time, but the system takes care of things itself uh, from a performance, security, and availability perspective. Um, the, uh, the, it, on top of all this, uh, uh, at WebScale, we enable applications to migrate to the cloud, and this is done through an, uh, uh, again, automated provisioning framework, which we'll talk about later. So we can move applications from any and any data center, any environment to uh, a choice of public uh, cloud uh, that the customer may want. So uh, all of this is provided within the single stack. The security uh, aspect itself is is quite large, from ranging from sort of a, a foundational PCI compliance and uh, uh, TLS security uh, to DDoS protection. Uh, VAF, VAF rules that are very specific to applications that are prepackaged into the uh, into the stack, and on the traffic infrastructure side, file integrating monitoring, which really monitors what's happening uh, on the back end, whether there are uh, files that are being inserted that we do not expect. All of this uh, provided in a single stack, everything stitched well together, uh, works very efficiently and provides uh, significant cost savings to other solutions out there um, uh, that where typically you have to stitch together a bunch of different solutions from different vendors. Uh, from, a, from a support perspective, all this is tied together with a 24-7 uh, support that we provide round the clock, uh, follow the sun, so wherever the traffic is, we have support following that. Now, uh, I'll touch upon a few of the points that we, we, we've talked about during this presentation and uh, part of the solution stack. So, uh, something we observe uh, quite a lot with, with a lot of our customers across verticals, really, but especially in you know, e-commerce and, and uh, digital media, is uh, traffic is very seasonal and sometimes very viral, too, uh, in the sense uh, you have traffic that doesn't follow the same pattern all the time. Sometimes there is an, an event that causes an uptick in traffic that uh, the, the application needs to react to. And what I mean by that is if you suddenly have a 10x or 20x traffic increase, uh, your application servers need to have enough capacity to process that. In the in sort of traditional uh, solutions that are out there today, uh, they can range from uh, a static hosting where you have a fixed capacity and you're either over provisioned most of the time or under provisioned when the traffic increase happens. And, and this is really a very critical time because when there's a traffic increase, it's very valuable traffic. Something of interest is happening with that application, but the, the static hosting solution cannot handle that traffic and what happens the application slows down or eventually just stops working uh, and this is valuable traffic uh, users who really want to uh, visit this application but cannot access it and that's very damaging to the to the brand to the revenue uh, of the of the customer itself uh, and then there are 
Uh, on the other hand, there are elastic technologies that uh, uh, work on hosting environments, but these are, from what we found, is, is more reactive. So they're, uh, yes, they do scale the application capacity out, but sometimes it's too late. <coughs> uh, often, uh, the, these uh, applications are, n are not able to see the traffic surge command, and um, they, uh, they scale the application capacity out, but there's a period of time when the application is not performing well at all. And, and on the other hand, uh, the scale in, when you can have uh, applications that scale out, you also need them to scale in efficiently. And uh, not a lot of them are incentivized or even uh, operate efficiently to scale back the application infrastructure. So this really leads to uh, less than efficient, both from a availability and performance standpoint and from a cost standpoint, solution out there today that uh, doesn't cater to the uh, varying uh, traffic patterns. Uh, so, so enter WebScale, right? So we, we have this very unique uh, um, uh, intellectual property and, and, and patterns around this where we talk about predictive auto scaling. What really it is, is we're able to look at different parameters and analyze that there is a, 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 a demand in, in uh, traffic coming in and the application needs to be ready to handle it. Uh, so we are able to scale the application uh, capacity out just before uh, the traffic uh, demand comes in and overwhelms the application. So one of the key things we provide with predictive auto scaling is we make sure that the application is running fast, is running, uh, is performing well even during the traffic surge. And most of the time, this traffic surge is the most valuable traffic that, that is entering the application. It could be a marketing event for an e-commerce store where there's a surge in traffic and more people are going to check out the uh, shopping cart. So, uh, th so that, that's the key thing. And on the, on the flip side, the scale-in, uh, we're, very, we're very careful and aggressive about it too in the sense when the application capacity is no longer de needed, we will scale the application back in uh, to make sure the, the, the cost parameters are efficiently managed. We're not incentivized by uh, running infrastructure for longer. Uh, since we're a third party, we're, we're more uh, focused on uh, uh, making sure the cost uh, parameters for the infrastructure are tightly managed as well. Um, the, the other thing, since all of this is software and all of this is automated, we can scale infinitely. We'll scale our own infrastructure out infinitely. We can scale uh, uh, an application out infinitely uh, or bounded by parameters that the application owner has uh, put in there. So that's predictive auto scaling. And uh, um, so, so, the, so the next part is, is sort of tied to uh, tied to uh, uptime, but we talked about uptime during sort of peak traffic, and now there is you there's the general uptime where you always need to be available. Uh, applications and the users of applications have changed a lot over the last decade or so, where it's no longer you you don't you you no longer can have this maintenance window where you can be necessarily uh, offline for three four hours every night because you have users all over the world accessing applications. So applications always need to be on. So when our uh, applications go down, there's a big uh, impact to the brand, to the revenue, depending on the, uh, the vertical the customer is in. So, so what we do at WebScale is, first of all, we, we insert a, a load balancing layer uh, between the traffic and the application. So we make sure the application infrastructure is used very, uh, very efficiently. The load balancer uh, uh, distributes the traffic across the application infrastructure. Um, we, so that way we ensure that the application is always right size. You don't have uh, uh, one server that's Overloaded. Uh, also, we, as we talked about, we can scale the infrastructure out. So we distribute traffic evenly. We make sure there are enough servers out there. You're never uh, over capacity. You're never uh, far under capacity. And the other thing is, since uh, 
Uh, WebScale is uh, performing a 360 monitoring of traffic and infrastructure. We know when something goes wrong. Uh, we, we listen to uh, the health of all the application servers and uh, we process different parameters that we know when an application server is, is not working right. And we're able to not just detect that it's not working right, but heal the application server by replacing it with another application server uh, whose uh, image, image is working fine and it's not perform, causing problems. So this, this ensures that you, know, you can, uh, everything is automated. When something goes wrong, the system takes care of the problem and replaces the faulty server. So uh, automation ensures, the web scale automation ensures that the application is always running. So we talked about uh, availability and scalability. Uh, in another key aspect to the success of any application out there today on the web is performance. Um, there's been various studies that have been done on how performance impacts uh, user engagement uh, on, on applications. Uh, so just, just in e-commerce, uh, over a third of the uh, of people visiting an, a, 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 an e-commerce application will abandon it if it takes more than three seconds to load. So they just won't shop there. And it's, 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 a, it's a problem that builds on itself. People who don't shop there will never visit that site again. And it, it continuously hurts the, uh, <laughs> the, the brand of the e-commerce uh, vendor. And in general, this is true. This is true in news and media. This is true in financial services. If the application does not perform, does not load fast enough, uh, people lose patience and they don't visit that site. They, wh what do they do? They go to a competitor site. So uh, it directly, performance directly impacts the revenue, the brand, the user engagement uh, within the application. Uh, at, at WebScale, we solve that problem. So uh, we, uh, we make sure that uh, performance is, uh, not something that the customer has to be worried about. We offload all uh, assets from a web application that can be cached uh, to to the CDNs. So uh, we are integrated with multiple uh, content delivery networks. So uh, we take static assets, uh, we offload them, cache them on content delivery networks. Content delivery networks are a distributed set of servers that are closer to internet and users. Uh, we also um, um, process some content optimizations at the web scale data plane where we ensure that uh, we, we cache content at our layer, but we also uh, ensure that the number of round trips to fetch a web page is reduced, that the overall data size to fetch a web page is reduced. And this is done across for desktop and mobile, and we have specific optimizations for each of them. Um, we manipulate uh, how the page is loaded so the user can interact with the page faster. So we do a bunch of different things around performance, all geared towards making sure the web page loads faster, the page speed improves, and user engagement overall is better for the customer. So uh, a lot of this is, is uh, correlated, but also we consciously drive towards uh, improving the uh, the overall cost of ownership for the customer. So moving to the cloud, when people move to the cloud, uh, they, they live in a model where you can uh, you don't have to go and uh, over provision your infrastructure or buy big boxes and overpay for capacity that you may or may not need. So you have the advantage of being flexible enough to choose how much capacity you need to start with, how much capacity you want to expand to. So with, with web scale, what we do is we ensure that your architecture is, starts off with a sort of baseline model where it's, it's good enough and it grows in and out as long as traffic comes in. So as traffic comes in, first of all, we're doing everything around the performance side to make sure only valuable traffic that needs to come into the origin is coming in. And what I mean by that is we block attacks. Anything that is statically cached outside the infrastructure on CDNs are cached. So only dynamic uh, content. And dynamic content is uh, typically personalized information on pages, 
ch checkouts in uh, in case of uh, e-commerce companies. So those have to come all the way back to the uh, origin or the backend infrastructure. So uh, we will manage uh, cost and the size of the infrastructure uh, uh, for valuable dynamic traffic that comes all the way in. Um, the, uh, all the uh, caching uh, reduces the uh, data charges that the cloud provider has to because uh, the cache at the CD ends. Uh, and on top of all that, the sort of the, the hidden cost savings really is the complete automation so the customer doesn't need to go and build a huge IT staff to take care of this. Uh, the, the, the cloud is a very programmable model. WebScale has built a lot of uh, intelligence and automation on top of it. So we handle problems and take care of problems in system time where people, you, the customer doesn't need to go and hire an, a large IT staff to manage it. WebScale takes care of it for them. So, we, we, so just touching upon the points, we talked a lot about scalability, which is uptime at peak. We talked about 100% uh, availability performance. Another, another very key aspect of uh, web applications is, is security. Uh, there is no application out there that uh, out there today that is not being attacked. But there is no application that's successful on the web that uh, works without some some level of strong security. <laughs> so. What does WebScale do to help around here, right? So we build uh, a foundational level of security where we have compliance around uh, PCI DSS standards. And this is for e-commerce customers who have credit card transactions. But uh, the, the key thing is we provide the, uh, a base level of sec security that enables H HTTPS transactions. So this is TLS. So we take care of the standards. So right now there is a TLS standard that's going out of uh, um, Vogue. We we uh, we are mandating our customers to move out of TLS 1.0 and 1.1. So we automatically ensure the latest standards of, of standards of TLS and also start to um, uh, deprecate the the lower standards that have uh, shown some vulnerability. So we take care of that. We can procure certificates for customers. Uh, we have relationships with uh, certificate authorities, so we can automatically procure uh, certificates. So wh what this means is we can take an infrastructure that is not HTTPS oriented and instantly turn it into an HTTPS one uh, by providing sort of the latest levels of security. Uh, and, and so this is a, sort of a foundational level. On top of that, we have a web application firewall. And we, uh, we, we build web application firewalls and don't just make it available to customers. We, we package it with inbuilt application specific rules. So if it's a WordPress site, we have WordPress specific rules. If it is an e-commerce site, we have specific rules based on the e-commerce application that we're using. So this is, we, we provide these rules. So we, we have hundreds of applications that we have looked at. So we provide these rules prepackaged into the application stack. Uh, on top of that, we make it a very easily usable bath. So uh, we have blacklisting, whitelisting based on IP address, user agents, uh, based on geography. So you can say uh, you, do not, you, you do not serve these users from a particular country, so you do not want them necessarily, uh, necessarily a lot of traffic coming in from that country. Uh, so that's, that's from a security angle. Uh, from a, a rules perspective, uh, we also provide DDoS protection. And what we do is, uh, in case you have uh, uh, the, the application is under a uh, DDoS, which is a distributed denial of service, where typically a lot of traffic is trying to inundate the application from being used. So uh, when we enable this DDoS mode, uh, we keep away all the bots out and only allow humans in. DDoS is almost always uh, uh, um, perpetrated by bots or robots. Um, so that's that's sort of the web application firewall uh, in in in, uh, in in its entirety. On top of that, we provide uh, access control list, uh, what we call web control, which is a way for us to uh, really anyone for to easily program rules. So. <coughs> 
the way I describe web controls is the do-it-yourself policy engine where you can go right if the request came in and had these parameters take this action and the action could be anything from rate limit block challenge uh, insert some uh, uh, content optimizations insert a cookie so there's a whole lot of things that you can do it's almost like if you saw this condition take this action and you can choose from a list of conditions choose from a list of actions and the key thing is it's so easy to program like anyone can do it you just go and write a web control um, uh, and so uh, we provide a lot of tools we provide a lot of automation and we build in a lot of policies and on top of that the system and our security teams are constantly looking at traffic through through traffic analytics tools that we have built into the portal that's available to customers as well but we're constantly looking at patterns that may be uh, maybe some causing some sort of anomaly and that don't look right and we flag them and we take some actions on them actions could be like rate limiting or challenging or even blocking so security is a big focus for for web scale we have done we built a, a sort of a whole solution stack within security itself starting from a foundational level of security to advanced bot mitigation uh, security So tying all this together, right, uh, you can protect your application around sort of security, performance, and uptime. But what happens if uh, the, uh, the, the problem lies not necessarily in the application, but in the, in the overall infrastructure? So it doesn't happen very often in the public cloud, uh, but you can have outages. Um, so first of all, we architect applications to be fault tolerant in uh, making ourselves available across uh, different application zones and regions. Uh, but <coughs> for customer applications, we have the ability to replicate the application in a different part of the cloud or in a different cloud altogether. Uh, we have seen a lot of the use cases today in replicating the application in a different part of the cloud. And the reason you want to do this is if this one region within your cloud provider went down completely, so not just uh, not not for a fault of the, the the customer or the code, but it just went down, and we've seen it happen a few times in the last few years, uh, then all applications in that region are down, but your customers around the internet are still trying to reach uh, the application. So uh, by mirroring the application in a different region, we're able to uh, have that application back up and running because it's very, very highly unlikely that two different regions in an application in a cloud provider go down at the same time. So we mirror that application in a different region. It's uh, it uh, we bring it back up with sort of industry leading SLAs. So we bring it back up within 60 minutes. We'll have very little data loss between when this one went down and that went down and that came up, and we're able to have that application up and running in no time. And this is an edge over competition. This is a, uh, um, a definitely uh, preservation of revenue and user engagement and brand for the customer. So uh, even when a whole cloud provider goes down, we're able to bring it back up. From a, from a backup perspective, we also back up the application. So when there's a developer error that causes the application to go down, we're able to not just uh, go pick from a backup that was previously taken, so we automatically take backups for customers, but we also check if those backups work before you go and restore it. So whenever we take a backup, we, we check if it works and we flag it if it's a valid, pristine backup, so when you need to restore it, you can just recover from it. Yes, and Anand, if I could just add something in here real quickly sure. as well. from. From a backup and disaster recovery perspective, what we've seen, especially in regions uh, where cloud services are just gaining a lot of traction and customers uh, are historically still in a data center environment, usually one of the first, um, their first uh, attempts to get to cloud are through disaster recovery and backup, where they want to try out cloud services, they will back up an application from a data center to a public cloud environment to essentially get their feet wet to test the waters of how cloud services work. So 
I think it's an interesting um, kind of entree to cloud services as customers that are traditionally used to a data center environment want to start taking advantage of cloud and one of the first services they generally do is around uh, disaster recovery and backup so that they can still maintain their, their data center environment, but they're backing it up to a cloud service provider. Um, and that usually will then open up the gates over time as they become more comfortable with cloud services, then they'll actually migrate applications from data centers to public cloud environments. Sorry, Anna. Yeah, no, no, that's, no, no, that's, that's a very good point. And uh, we have seen a sort of a cloud uh, insertion strategy in many, many geographies, exactly as what Mike said, where, uh, and we have a product that's specifically catered to this, where we don't actively manage the application, but we manage the the replica of it or the mirror of the application in the cloud. So when when they feel ready, they can just do a failover, um, and and uh, the application's up running in the cloud because everything's been set up. Now uh, all of this, everything that I talked about is is available through a, a portal um, that is, a, is, is available to all customers who use it. Uh, our own support staff use this portal. So uh, the, the portal itself helps you manage multiple applications if you, uh, if you have applications under one sort of account. Um, it provides all the analytics uh, around users, devices, browsers, provides all the key statistics around performance, how the application is performing, how the traffic's coming in. Uh, we also have uh, the, the web controls and cloud controls that we earlier talked about, which is the ability for us to write easy policies that, um, that are able to address traffic or write easy policies. The cloud controls are the ability for us to write policies that can, uh, uh, we can address infrastructure with it. So all of this is possible through the uh, web scale portal. We have information about the uh, scaling, how the infrastructure is being scaled out uh, when traffic comes in. Um, and we have a sort of a deep dive uh, traffic analysis tool called the Traffic Viewer, where you can slice and dice the traffic based on different parameters, understand exactly what's going on. There's a graph that's showing some uh, interesting events, so you can zoom in and hone in on some particular thing you want to look at and understand what, what's really happening. Uh, again, as I said, we internally at WebScale use all of this to address uh, performance and security uh, improvements to applications. So, so sort of bringing it all together, right? We talked about a lot of things we do once applications are in, in the cloud, but how do we get there? Um, so, uh, typically, a lot of our, our customers are not yet in the public cloud. They're in different environments. And the, the process of getting there has traditionally been <coughs> very cumbersome, very complex, and, and uh, a little bit of the unknown. So at WebScale, we've completely simplified that process. So we, um, we automated everything from the moment uh, a customer tells us this is my application and we need it to move it to the cloud. So what we mean by that is we will uh, get information about uh, a customer's application um, essentially in a spreadsheet, right? And we feed it into our auto provisioning framework. And what that does is it goes and creates so you can choose the cloud provider of choice. You, you, you just need to know what is the flavor of the application. Uh, we, we understand the sizing, base sizing that it needs to start off with. And the auto provisioning framework is, we, what we've done is we've templatized everything. So we know for these applications what we need to do. Everything now runs in code, it's under source control. So we've transformed the whole auto provision, the provisioning of a cloud and migrating it, for provisioning of an application and migrating it to the cloud from a very people intensive task to a completely software driven task, so it's all automated. So the networks uh, uh, elements are constructed automatically, the application elements are constructed automatically in the cloud, it's deployed, we can, once it's deployed, we can verify if it's running right by sending 
sort of sample web requests and making sure status codes are okay. Uh, and this is just getting it into the cloud. And once an application is in the cloud, in, in you know, in, in, the, in the in the DevOps world, they all follow continuous delivery frameworks where you know you don't just deploy it once; you deploy it many times, and you deploy it through different stages. Really, right? You go through a development stage, to a staging, to a production. So uh, different customers have different uh, sort of flavors of this. So we handle every every aspect of it. So all the customer needs to worry about is where's my code and I'm making changes to the code and I need to push it through these different stages and everything is taken care of through this uh, continuous delivery framework. And all this is running, as we mentioned, on our data plane. Uh, so uh, through our data plane, our data plane is, uh, uh, um, is acting as a, uh, a proxy and handling all the traffic coming in into this application infrastructure that's automatically being provisioned to the cloud. And this can happen on any cloud. And in some sense, you can start to think about, you can have one application in one cloud, another application in another cloud, and all of this is managed automatically, all provided through a single portal for the customer to view and configure. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, and just to spend a, a couple minutes on how we actually onboard the customer to follow up on what on I'm just talking about for customer migrations. Uh, essentially, we take a, a four-phased approach to a migration. Uh, you can essentially think of this as a four-week timeline. Uh, however, we've migrated customer applications in as, as little as uh, a week to two weeks. It really depends on how quickly the customer is able to move and get us the right information that we need uh, to build out the architecture in the cloud for their application. Um, but what we've done is because we've migrated over 700 applications to the cloud, uh, we have these templates, we have these blueprints of how to migrate applications through an automated framework. And really what that means is it's a, a hassle-free, seamless transition. Uh, and when we're transitioning it to stateless application architecture and infrastructure, uh, that really reduces a lot of the friction points that would otherwise be there in a manual process. Uh, and so because we've done that so many times, we're experienced at this, we have those plans that mitigate any downtime as, as customers are migrating their applications. And so we'll generally go through a phase one of planning uh, the, the, the migration, understanding the customer's uh, current application environment, what architecture, what components or compute components need to be uh, built uh, to support the application. We'll go through a second phase to actually migrate the code um, uh, to the cloud provider. Uh, we'll go through a validation and acceptance testing phase where the customer is able to uh, have, a, have time to actually ensure that the, uh, that the application is working as expected. Um, during that time, WebScale will also do our own validation testing uh, as well. And then once it's ready to go from uh, staging to production, we will go live in, in, in phase four. Um, so this is a little bit of a simplified version, but wanted to let everyone know that uh, generally speaking, it's a fourth phased approach that can be accomplished in a couple of weeks. Uh, sometimes quicker, depending on how fast we're able to get information from the customer. And again, just to wrap this all up, WebScale provides uh, 24 by 7 follow the sun support. So it's 365 days a year. We have SLAs for response times and critical tickets. Um, so service level agreements back up our support. Um, we do uh, prov uh, provide support, whether that's by phone, 24 by 7 email. Uh, we have our portal as well, which a customer always has access to. And generally, we also provide Slack communication channels during deployments, which we have found to be very um, quick and efficient ways of communicating with customers as we need to get information back and forth to communicate effectively. Um, all this is also backed with a, a ticketing and tracking system, knowledge base, uh, full API access as well. Um, so with that, 
what does a typical customer profile look like and how does WebScale price? Um, sample profile will really be any web application that is LAMP stack based. So whether it's Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP frameworks um, are all technologies that WebScale can support. Um, generally speaking, once an application reaches about 100,000 visitors or more per month, it, it tends to be a very good candidate for WebScale. We have customers that do multi-millions of visitors a month, tens of millions of visitors per month. So 100,000 is kind of the baseline. And once it gets above that, then generally speaking, all the feature functionality that we talked about on today's call becomes a lot more important to ensure that those visitors have the right seamless experience with the application. Another uh, good profile is a customer that has variable or seasonal traffic patterns. You know, patterns that, uh, traffic patterns that might spike up or down, depending on, again, it could be a viral marketing event, it could be the, the time of the year, it could be the busy season for, uh, for that application and it needs to elastically adjust up and down or dynamically adjust up and down to, to meet that traffic. And then, of course, having a high level of user engagement where that application will directly impact revenue or brand. So companies that uh, process uh, revenue online or have a high degree of, of brand associated with their application are going to be uh, much more uh, are going to resonate much better with web scale services and ensuring that their application is always up no matter which cloud service provider they choose. Some example verticals that we have found a lot of success in, of course, e-commerce, uh, financial, travel, hospitality, retail companies uh, that have an, an omni-channel experience. So they might have brick and mortar stores, but are also offering services online as well. Um, and then uh, e-learning and education are also uh, very good verticals um, uh, for web scale services. From a pricing perspective, we are all software as a service based. Um, so it is really based on a per application pricing. Uh, it's monthly reoccurring based on using one or two year terms. And then we'll have additional services that are add-on services uh, around uh, security, managed security, backup, disaster recovery as well. And each of our packages come with the option of adding infrastructure hosting onto it as well. So two deployment models, one where a customer may already be in a cloud environment and have their own cloud account. They will simply delegate access rights to WebScale so that we could implement the WebScale technology stack into their existing cloud account. For customers that aren't yet in the cloud, uh, they can ride on top of WebScale's cloud account. So we will do everything from um, providing the, uh, the compute infrastructure in whichever cloud provider they choose to doing all the application uh, and WebScale technology stack on top of that. So it's a single invoice that the customer has for their entire application infrastructure. And it's important to note there's no CapEx investment here. Um, since this is all software as a, as a service, there are no um, appliances to buy or maintain or have technical resources uh, need, to, need to know and understand and support. Um, and then, of course, WebScale provides 24 by 7 follow the sun support on all of, our, all of our services so customers can kind of rest easy knowing that their application uh, is, is supported. And if they have questions, they can reach out anytime. Uh, to get those answered and addressed. So with that, I wanted to thank everyone for their time today. Um, we'll start to wrap it up here, but I, I, before we go, I did want to ask if there are any immediate questions. Um, if there are, please let us know. We're happy to answer them now. Okay. And if there aren't, um, if you do have questions after, please feel free to reach out to your real security reseller. Um, they would be able to answer questions um, or reach out to myself and Anand, and we can um, uh, we can happy to answer those questions as well later on. And thank you very much for joining today. Uh, we appreciate your time, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank, thank you. you.